Hey guys, how are ya? I hope you're all hanging in there and um, had a great Thanksgiving. Um, things have been crazy as usual and I have been awful with uploading to this channel other than trailers and coming soons and all that. I haven't really done a lot over here um, and there's a reason for it and I will get into that um, and it actually ties to today's topic. Um, I'm gonna have to do a lot of backtracking to make this make sense. But obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic and you guys, most of you know that I had to do some quick thinking when it came to my job and employment and income um, with writing, with Crazy Ink, with alternative streams of revenue, all of that. So for the past eight months or so, I have been dabbling in freelance work and wow, it is a whole nother world. Um, anybody that knows me well knows that my actual undergrad is in journalism. And so I am trained as a newspaper reporter. Sounds great. Sounds like that would apply and easily be something I could use as a skill in the world of freelance. Wrong. Writing today versus writing the way that I was tra trained for newspapers, totally different things. Um, yeah. So for eight months, I've been kind of bobbling along, finding my way, making a ton of mistakes in this world of free freelance writing. And I thought I'd share my thoughts on it. I thought I'd offer some tips. I know a lot of you have asked me, what are you doing? How are you doing this? Where are you finding these jobs? Um, yeah. So I'm going to dive into that. I'm going to talk about what I've been up to as far as freelance writing and other ways to make money with writing than you know, fiction, novels, and books. Obviously, my comfort levels and comfort zone is fiction books. Um, you know, I own a publishing company. I have over 100 solo releases. So when I first thought about getting into writing for various places, and there are uh, several different types of places, um, I thought this would be no big deal. I'll get to finally be just the author, just the writer, and someone else can handle all of the management stuff. Ah, uh, wrong. I think, well, one good thing is I guess it's given me a perspective of what it feels like to be one of my authors. Um, I have slammed with deadlines just like I slam them with deadlines now. And a lot of times that means no sleep in order to meet those deadlines. So let's start with the first job. Um, when I first got into this, I was doing, I don't even know what to call it, but it was mostly like review work for um, a company that, I don't really even know what they did. Here's the thing with freelance writing. They don't, for overall, there was one, there's one company right now that I'm working with that's amazing at this, but there isn't a lot of communication. So when you work remotely, um, you know, it's hard because you miss that face-to-face -face thing. You don't get the intimacy that, like, even at Crazy Inc., yeah, we don't meet in person, but we have groups and have formed a community and network. So you always kind of know who you can go to if you have a question. At the first, we're going to ignore those docs. The first place that I went to work for, there was none of that. Um, they worked through, a, worked through a system called Slack, which I guess, I mean, that's it's a program where you should be able to communicate, but at the same time, you're only communicating so freely. You know, they have access to anything you're saying to a coworker. So you have to be careful, like, what goes in your private messages. It's not like Facebook where you can talk freely with a coworker the way you would on a coffee break on an in-person job. Um, and it was really difficult to get, like, questions answered. Now, I was fortunate at that first place because one of the authors I work with at Crazy Inc. actually was the one who told me about this job. So I could go to her and say, hey... I'm lost, I don't know what I'm doing. So that was helpful, but if I didn't have that, I would have felt like so lost. Um, we joke that actual robots run this place. To get an answer takes days. Um, when you do get an answer, it's generally a, a link that says follow the instructions. Your question's about the instructions, so that's not helpful. So it's a lot of kind of do it and do it wrong, be corrected, deal with being corrected, and then you'll learn that way. Um, there's no training whatsoever. There's no help, really. So it's very learn it on your own. That doesn't normally scare me. I mean, when I got into Indian writing and books, I was on my own. I knew no one. So I learned how to publish on my own, right? So I figured this would be easy. Wrong. It is easier to publish a book than it is to write for some of these places, I swear. 
I used to think people that did freelance work, well, okay, I guess you're calling that a job, but that seems like fun to me. That seems like writing books. Even now, I have a hard time calling books a job because I enjoy it. So I figured, well, even when I was a journalist, well, if you write all day, you're not really working. That's because I'm fortunate and I love to write. I'll tell you what, this freelance stuff where they give you SEO writing type things where they give you keywords and want you to write, that's a job. It's not writing like fun things that you think you're gonna like to write about. It's, in the case of the review company, writing about tools, writing about toilet plungers, septic system cleaner thingies. The great thing about this freelance stuff is I'm learning a ton about everything. Who knew I would know so much about roofs? Who knew I'd know so much about home repair? I know a lot about these things because of this freelance work and these assignments. At the same time, trying to stay awake difficult. This is not exciting writing. Um, so, you know, hey, put it this way. I will never feel like, oh, well, if you're doing freelance, it's, it's fun. It's not fun. It's very different than fiction writing, which is fun. Um, so yeah, there are types, I've learned this, there are types of freelance work. There's SEO writing, which is where they give you a keyword and you are literally working for Google. You are trying to make search engine op SEO means search engine optimization. And if I could say it, that would be about as amazing as me being able to pull one of these things off. It takes time and experience and I'm finally getting better at it. So that's great. Um, but again, you're using very specific keywords and tying these things that may not even go together, socks and cooking trays. And you're pulling it into one article about how to homeschool. It's really, it stretches the imagination creatively. And honestly, that's my favorite kind of freelance stuff so far because I do like trying to take these weird words that don't belong in the same article and make them cohesively flow as though I'm not doing what I'm doing, which is tying together these weird words. Um, so I do actually enjoy that a lot. I think it's fun. I did not like the review stuff. Um, that was literally, you're going to Amazon, you're finding, you're reading about a product and you're basically lying and saying, this product is the best. This is our top pick. Well, how do you know if it's your top pick? The thing could be broken in the mail. The thing could be overpriced. You wouldn't know. You're just literally writing my top pick. So word to the wise, when you go on Amazon and you see a product review, guess what? It was probably someone like me who was told to put, that's my top pick. It's not necessarily my top pick. So that is a thing that really bothered me about that job. And I'm not there now. And I'm glad. Um, I didn't like that. I felt like I was lying and I, I felt like I was, yeah, I get it. It was my job to write a review about a product, but it didn't feel like a real review considering I've never even held the product in my hand. So that wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with that type of writing. That would be like review writing. Um, so product reviews, SEO writing, other types of writing I have experimented with and found, you know, sort of okay. Um, content creation, general like website filler stuff. So like, you know, a website that is recommending nursing homes to seniors or assisted living facilities to seniors, just blurbing like here in sunny blank, you know, Texas is this assisted living community with these amenities, that type of thing. That's okay. I don't mind that. Um, it's easy and you're not lying to anyone. You're just giving basic facts. Now, with that said, you are finding only the good things about these facilities. That was a little bit challenging too, because as I'm doing the research, I'm seeing a bunch of one-star reviews and bad patient or family experiences, and I can't mention that. So that was hard. I think my big struggle with this is I was trained as a journalist, and back in the day, the media wasn't biased. You were trained to give all sides of the story. You were trained to put out only the facts. And I'm still back in 1995 when I got that degree. I even struggle with it in politics. I don't know what news to watch because I don't know a single channel that isn't biased. Same sort of thing. I uh, really have a hard time writing knowing, wait, there's facts that people should probably know and just only putting the pretty packaging on. So that is hard for me. With fiction work, you're saying it's fiction. You're not saying it's true. You're not claiming it's true. It's not going to affect anyone's life, pro or con. Um, so I didn't really like the content creation. The SEO stuff, you're not claiming, hey, 
this is amazing, you should try it. You're just tying together different keywords for whatever reason that I still don't really understand because, again, I haven't had any training. So, you know, I'll learn it and let you know. Um, blurb writing, easy enough, just summary stuff. Ghost writing, I have enjoyed. I've got a couple of people that I'm working on um, books for. I really enjoy that. They're giving me an outline of what they want the book to look like and then I'm basically filling in the blanks. That's just second nature to me and easy. The downside to that one is that it's taking away time for my actual books. So I'm getting a little bit behind for me in book in my book release schedule. Um, I'm still releasing regularly all of that, but it's going to catch up to me in like a year. Luckily, I'm about a year ahead on my books. Um, I think the next one that I have due is like next November or something. But if I don't stay on that and keep writing my own stuff, I'm going to find myself in a huge crunch period in about, I don't know, 10, 11 months. So... I don't want that to happen, and I am going to make a video about how I'm balancing this um, for people that struggle with balancing those deadlines and keeping that workflow going. But hey, it is what it is. It's 2020. I'm doing my best, and I don't even know if it's good enough, and honestly, yeah, it's 2020. Just do your best. Get through. Survive. So, okay, I guess if I had to put these in order, I'm going to say my favorite is SEO writing. Next would be blurbing. Then content creation, I'm looking, I've got a list over here, so that's what I'm looking at. Um, content creation, oh, you know what, ghost writing would be at the top of all of this, but we'll we'll just pretend, we'll put that there. And then very bottom product reviews, I did not like that job, and guess what, I got fired from that job, it's not exciting, Aaron doesn't get fired, well Aaron did. Why did Aaron get fired? This is a word to the wise. So I have a business account for Crazy Ink, because obviously it's business. And I had no clue. No, literally this was the most innocent thing ever. Now they will call me some kind of scam person, but this was so innocent. This is just how dumb I am. I did not realize that because I have a shop based all and connected to my business account on Amazon, that it is tied to some kind of affiliate code. Never knew. I don't even believe in affiliate codes. Never knew this was a thing. Apparently, never gotten a check for it. Never knew, never, no clue. Because I take links and I turn them into smart links. So I'm not using affiliate anything. Well, apparently when I was clicking the links that this company would give me on like say toilet bowl cleaner, it was my Amazon, off of my Amazon. My Amazon was instantly handing me an affiliate link. Who knew? So when I'm turning in these stories, thinking I've done a great job hyperlinking it to the product, feeling somewhat scuzzy because here I am writing a review recommending this toilet bowl cleaner when I have no clue because I've never used it. That's what I'm feeling scuzzy about. Apparently, I'm giving them affiliate links. And so they're thinking I'm trying to like, I don't know, profit off of whatever they're doing with these reviews. The good news is those links never went out into the world because they found them, promptly fired me, told me to go scam someone else as, okay, I haven't made a dime off of it. And if you had just come to me and told me, I would have fixed them all myself. But you know what? It worked out okay. I don't get fired. Got fired. Chalk that up to 2020. It's all right because that job really bothered me. I don't like writing reviews on something that I've never used. And now I don't trust reviews. So that sucks. But it did land me in this great place that I am at now that has a real person. It's not a robot where they answer your questions and I feel like I'm going to be happy there. So that's the moral. I found my place, but it did take me several different places. Um, I will continue with the content creation stuff just as an extra income, but the focus of my writing stuff will go into SEO until I'm back in therapy land. At that point, I don't know what will happen. I don't know if I'll go. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I know that I've got the rest of 2020 covered. I know that I'm going to be happier here. I like being able, I've learned a lot about myself. I like being able to talk to someone directly, not a robot. I want to be able to ask the question directly, not have to go look at an instruction sheet that I've already looked at 10 times and for whatever reason, it's just not sinking in. So it was good in a, a lot of ways. It taught me, hey, these authors need you there so they can ask you directly, whether it's in a group or in a PM, because sometimes you can look at a sheet that says submission sheet, formatting guides, and not get it. Just not get it. You're trying, but you don't get it. Um, so it gave me more patience with the authors, gave me more appreciation for the type of writing we do off in indie. 
Um, it's nice to be able to just be creative and write what you want and not to have to tie weird words together. At the same time, I love the challenge of the SEO stuff and I do think I'm going to enjoy it. So that's where I'm at. Um, goods, bads, glad I'm out of the review place. Got a book out of it. Actually wrote a book called Flowers for Meg about that experience. It's coming soon. It's a horror book. So I always see the silver lining. I found it there. It has been a hell of a ride. 2020 has had me trying all sorts of things. It's questioned everything I know about journalism the way I was trained. Um, it's made me realize the importance of technology and keeping up with it. I've got another issue that others don't have, which is barriers to my ability with Google Drive and OneDrive um, because of firewalls for therapy. That's been a challenge. It finally came down to, you know what, I'm going to get other devices. There could be computers with firewalls freelance work computers without them. And that's working out well now, but it has been a challenge for a, a long time now, over a year. So you learn these things as you go. Um, this video is getting long. I'm gonna quickly just talk about where you find these jobs because that's another question I've been asked. Um, if you guys don't care about that, then peace out now. If you do care, here we go. So I started initially, well, I went to multiple friends. I mean, obviously, 90% of my friends are authors or writers. So a lot of them do this anyway. And I went to them and got a mix of answers as to where they find their freelance jobs. Some find it on, I want to call it fervor. I don't know how to say these words out loud. I just know what they look like. Um, a lot of them found them on Upwork, um, many different places, LinkedIn, Indeed, um, crowd content, there are many different places where you can find these jobs. Um, the way I did it after all of the, you know, going around and asking author friends is I basically touched base with two of them. Like I said, on a couple of these, I had a direct contact that said, hey, they're hiring over here. This is where I work. It's a good experience. They pay, blah, blah, blah. I got jobs through actual friends. So ask around, network. That's why we network, right? It's not just always book world. It could be something like this. Hey, it's a pandemic. I have no work. I don't want to starve to death. And do you know where I can get freelance stuff remotely? So I did that. And that's where I got this one that I'm super excited about um, that actually is working and I don't have to lie. So I did get it that way, but it took me months. Another place I got a lot of chances to try things was Indeed. Um, Indeed had several different types of writing jobs. One of them was for like a place that wrote academic sort of term papery stuff. Again, what's your comfort level? Are you okay with writing a term paper for a kid or are you not? Um, I felt like a lot of ethics is involved in this. Um, they have places on Indeed that want businesses, want their web content written, you know, start to finish. Uh, a lot of blog writing jobs. I have had a couple of those and enjoyed them. Some of those entangle with SEO writing, some don't. Um, you can become an expert in a field. So like with me, I have applied for work as an expert in the field of psychology and also in the field of publishing. I'm waiting on those and I feel like hopeful about them as well because I have a lot to offer in those areas. So really it's thinking creatively, get on Indeed, get on LinkedIn, ask your author friends. You will find work in freelance if you want to. Does it pay well? Not so much. Some places are better than others. If you have a connection, it's going to be better than others. Um, a lot of them work on a star ranking system where you have to like prove yourself and have so much content and then you'll bump up to a higher per word rate. Uh, a lot of them don't. And it's like with one place, because I have 20 years of professional writing experience, I was able to go in there right away as a three star and the highest you can be is four star. In a couple of weeks, I'll be at four star and I'll get paid the highest rate. That's awesome. Those kind of places are important and you want to look for that. Like if you know I have a ton of writing experience, you want to look for a place that's going to reward you for that. Um, and at that same place, if I want, because I want the work, I can take a one star assignment and get paid like ridiculous, like literally a dollar for an article. Now, when I say article, we're talking 200 words. But at that same place, had that been a four star assignment, it would be say $6 for an article. Um, Articles tend to range, but that's really more like a blurb. But okay, so an article, so to speak, would be between 600 and 1,200 words. 
Um, and the range that I have seen is between seven and $30 for that same 1200 words. So you gotta be writing a lot for it to build up. I also have now got friends that are in this, that I've met through these freelance jobs that are making well over $2,000 a month, but they don't leave their computer. So can you make a decent living at this? Yes, because if you think, well, I don't have to pay to commute, I don't have to pay the expenses of a vehicle, I'm able to work at home, blah, blah, blah. $2,000 a month is not a bad chunk of change when you have no expenses and you can go to work in your pajamas and not have to go out there right now in COVID times. Um, but you're gonna work a lot. So it's choices. Um, will I stick with this? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with myself. I know I'm giving it a shot. I know I'm grateful for it. I know that I'm excited. I always am to be learning a new skill. And I know that I'm getting there faster than I thought I would. It was intimidating as hell to leave journalism world 25 years ago and come into this and realize they're nothing alike. My degree is blatantly useless. Nothing about the journalism I, I learned applies to today's journalism. It just doesn't. The very basic principle, I don't even know how you would sit in a class and say, your job as a journalist is to be unbiased. How could a professor even say that in today's climate? It would be weird. It's to me disgusting what has happened to the field of journalism. I, I uh, like I'm embarrassed to say I have a bachelor's degree in journalism now and thank God I have my master's in therapy because we'll just focus on that because journalism is not what it used to be. And that has been my big struggle. It's all in the head ethical. Why do I wanna write this kind of content that isn't fair? Luckily, with this SEO stuff and the current job I found, there's no lying involved. There's no saying I used this product when I didn't. Am I pushing a product? Yes. But I'm also looking at this as a marketing job. Marketing is pushing products, and I'm okay with that. So there's a lot to think about. If you want to write unbiased stuff, I don't know. Content creation, help a business with their web content, even then you're selling the business. So... Try to look at it as a marketing job. Um, yeah, ghostwrite. There's a lot of ghostwriting. You'd be amazed how many ghostwriting jobs you can find through Upwork, Indeed, I guess forever, but I don't know. They don't, they pay so low. Just don't be afraid to try. I'm crazy enough to try it all, and you probably are too. I mean, we are in desperate times, people. Let's try it all. What have we got to lose? Nada. All right, guys, until next time, I hope that answered your questions. If you have more, please leave them in the comments. I will do separate videos. I will message you. I will help you as much as the people that have helped me have helped me. And to my author friends that have helped me, thank you. You guys are keeping me good. I'm good to go. This is creative, outside the box, but hey, it's working. And yeah, no regrets. Till next time, peace, love, books, and crazy.